Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Bad Gamer, Good Gamer podcast. We have a hey, hot guys. topic to talk about today. I'm sure you've seen it all over the Twitterverse. Is it, and the gaming, is it as uh, hot as hell and... kind of topic? Is it that hot? Yeah, it's like a perfect setting for Doom. <laughs> Actually, that's true. It I was is, trying to yeah, link it to yeah. Doom somehow, but yeah, yeah that's, that's... We kind of have to. <laughs> uh, if you haven't heard uh, major, major allegations regarding... Uh, What's been going on between Bethesda and Mick Gordon, and more specifically the uh, the studio director Marty Stratton, yeah. uh, regarding uh, the soundtrack for Doom Eternal, uh, specifically the collector's edition. Uh, let's just do like a little sort of like backstory because there's a lot of like accusation. It goes back two and a half years ago. Something yeah. you know just came out um, a couple of weeks ago, and. There's been like litigation and whatnot, or like, you know, lawyers talking behind the scenes. It's like, this is a big one. And for those who don't know the full story, I think it's just worth kind of like going through just kind of like what happened in the past too, so that everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Give them a breakdown, then we'll discuss our thoughts and bring yeah, it together. Yeah, exactly. So in May 2020, id Software Studio Director Marty Stratton posted on Reddit an open letter regarding why... The studio wasn't able to deliver on the promise that they made of a lossless and uncompressed soundtrack of Doom Eternal as part of the collector's edition, um, featuring, they said that it would be featuring composer of Mick Gordon. Uh, what ended up coming out was 11, uh, 12 or 11 of these uh, tracks, or 59 tracks, were only mixed by him, while the rest were mixed from music from the game. So obviously, that's not what was promised. Uh, people were not happy. And uh, Marty said in the post that the reason why this fiasco, this, this, this took place, was that Gordon was to blame. So he called out Gordon, Mick, Mick Gordon directly. And he said he was to blame and that he delayed the soundtrack and that he under-delivered, which forced the studio to um, get the game's lead audio designer. Uh, what's his name? Chad something? Chad something. He's a Chad. Chad. Like I mean, Chad. he's a Chad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Chad something to make the rest of the soundtrack. Um, Mick's full statement regarding that situation was published on his Medium account on the 9th of November, two and a half years later. Yeah. Now, he wasn't sitting around doing nothing. There was a lot that was going on in the background. We'll get to that in a bit. But in his massive, massive blog post, which I did not read. I just like read what other websites reported on because it's like I I, you, I think, went three, through some of it. I went through three quarters of it and then like I skimmed the last few things. But yeah, I, I went through yeah, the main it's, bits. It's like a 14,000 word post. So. It's a one hour read. Like if you it's on it's yeah. on medium and it shows like 59 uh, like minutes. How long read. it will take. Yeah. Yeah. So he claims that it was a difficult project to work on this Doom Eternal soundtrack um, because the studio Again, this is a lot of claims and allegations. Just so that we're covering our ground, this is what he's claiming happened, his side of the story. Uh, so he's claiming that the studio allegedly required him to deliver two levels worth of music every month. This is the music for the game, not the, not the OST. The whole yeah, problem the is with the OST. Yeah, but like from the, from the get-go, they were difficult to work with because every month they wanted two levels worth of music, even though most of the game just did not exist. Now, I don't know how this whole thing works but i'm yeah. assuming you need to see some of the game you need to know some of the direction you need to know something before starting uh, to create any sort of like yeah mick, art exactly mick actually mentioned that like there was no direction in the beginning they were like they were just like make music and he had no idea for for the longest time i don't know how long but like it was like that like you need a yeah. direction to to kind of make the music or to make yeah the right exactly music. yeah yeah so he also said that there were numerous rights and scrapping of work due to the continuing changing development of the game. Again, this definitely cannot help if you're creating anything that is like, whether it's a, a artwork or music or whatever, for the game or for any other sort of medium, if it mm. continues to change, then so will your work and a lot of the stuff that you'll do. Will you be would scrapped. know more, more like definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And this even works like in development, right? Like with my current job, like we've seen a lot of that happen. We were working towards like developing something, then some buddy changes their mind about something else and then we have mm. to scrap what we worked on uh, so uh, this is a quote from him uh, he's saying that he's talking about Marty he rejected yep. my belief that the current schedule was flawed and suggested my act of trying to do something about it uh, was a sign of incompetence uh, he alleges 
He also continued to say that, refusing to accept the reality of the situation, he threw the proposal back in my face and proceeded to tear me down for having the audacity to raise the issue in the first place. So instantly, Marty sounds like a dick, according <laughs> yeah. to, to, to Gordon's uh, allegations here. Uh, not, not willing to accept that the schedule is flawed, not willing to accept that all these constant changes is also obviously going to affect the timeline, and then just yeah. blaming it on him, blaming it on you know, the contractor that he hired is just a dick move, really. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, he also claims that he wasn't paid. This is another huge major like yeah. dick move. He wasn't paid until eight months into the project and then wasn't paid again for another 11 months. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, we talked before about like artists generally not getting paid in time or not getting paid enough or whatever, but this is insane. This, this is, is on a whole nother level. Yeah. Like yeah, they yeah. start the work and not get paid, even though they delivered uh, some of the work or some of the brief. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So, so that is the just them working together a fiasco situation. But then the real issue is regarding the OST, the OST, which is different than music for the game, right? Uh, Separate. Yeah. It was promised. They're, they're it was promised as part yeah. of the uh, collector's edition, initially. The, the uh, yes, OST. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Bethesda announced in E3 2019 that the collector's edition would include Gordon's original soundtrack, and Gordon claims that no one discussed this with him. That not even in preparation for the E3 announcement, they didn't even like talk to him about it. So this seems to have like caught him by surprise. And I would hate to be somebody in his position to be caught by surprise with this kind of announcement. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's not only that, like it's it's this is something that both sides have actually mentioned in the post, in mm. both of their posts. They actually corroborate each other like Marty uh, two Weirdly and a half enough. years ago uh, actually does say um, let me let me try to get the actual quotes. Uh, if you can give me a second. Okay. Yeah. At E3 last year, we announced that the OST would be included with the Doom Eternal's Collector's Edition. At that point in time, we didn't have Mic under our uh, under contract. At that point in time, we didn't have Mic under contract for the OST because of ongoing issues receiving the music we needed for the game. So even he admits that they didn't contract Mick for the OSC and claimed it uh, otherwise. That's crazy. That, that's like, insane. That's no ridiculous. matter the reason, even though his reason is because he felt like he didn't want to distract Mick at the time, which doesn't make sense. It I'm sure he was sense. a lot more distracted once he like, saw that it was announced he'd be working on the OSD for the game. He, that's yeah. ex exactly it. He actually mentions that in his post as well. He's like, this is even more of a distraction. I was like freaking out. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's when he started approaching them. He's like, hey, I just saw the E3 announcement. What's happening? Is there going to be a contract? And until uh, January the following year, uh, until he got the contract to start the OST. So from 2019, yeah. from E3 until January, he was like freaking out, I'm sure. Like, yeah, like, yeah. He mentions it briefly, but I can imagine that he was freaking out. I mean, I've I've seen this happen here, where people work out of contract, and they still get paid. Hey, actually, wait, that happened with me. Oh I yeah. I worked for like yeah over the year with no contract whatsoever. But they but told you, hey, paid. you're working on this, and then you got paid. Yeah, yeah. no, I, like I got paid a monthly salary. I got access to their systems. I did everything, right, right. but I had no legal document proving that I was working for them. Right. Fair, uh, fair enough. But I, like, I'm I feel like his no, situation no, is. No, 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 I'm not saying this is in defense of, of Bethesda. Yeah, I'm just of saying not. that I've seen this happen and it just still boggles me hearing that stuff like that happens elsewhere and like, you know, much more well-established sort of like companies and, and true, corporations actually, yeah. and one like you, you wouldn't expect that kind of I don't know uh, that kind of like that kind of work or that kind of work ethic or that kind of like system to exist yeah. in these kind of companies exactly right? like we that's, that's a good way of felt the it. same way about um, the whole Helena Taylor situation yeah. with the bayonet and whatnot like like it just didn't feel right and then a lot of voice actors came out and, and you know they collaborated that like similar things have happened with them and all that sort of stuff. And now Bethesda apparently still, you know, like it does stuff like that as well. But, but yeah. It's crazy that it's all coming out now, like almost at the same time between Helena and, and this yeah, one. It's yeah, been a month yeah. apart or like something. Yeah. One oh, month. Oh, no, no. More than a month. It's been like Has it been maybe more? a couple of yeah. months. Yeah. 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 Um, but like within a relatively small time frame, uh, it came yeah. out. Yeah. 
Uh, but anyways, uh, Gordon claims that once the game was released, he discovered that all the ejected tracks, mock-ups, demos, ideas, and sketches, I don't know he did sketches, uh, that, he supplied, uh, that he supplied to Bethesda, but was under the impression that they weren't being used, he discovered that they were all actually added to the game. That's that's that such a scumbag move. Yeah, that's very like... scumbag move. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, exactly. Uh, according God. to him, that means that they've used four hours and 46 minutes of his music, but they only paid him for two hours and 22 minutes, leaving yeah. him with like two, two hours and 24 minutes unused that they that they I sorry, unpaid that they used. So almost half Double, of the yeah. work that he gave them that they said that they will not like use was used. It's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. And he still hasn't been paid for. Uh, until this time, that's what that's what he has said. So yeah. well, it's 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 coming. Um, so now let's move on to the OST. Gordon yeah. now claims that they he agreed to produce, produce twelve songs for the OST, and that they, he was given a flexible deadline of April sixteenth. But then, just thirteen days before of April sixteenth, they told him that oh, by the way, because of some consumer protection laws in some regions that were launched with the game and the collector's edition. We need to make sure that what they pay for includes everything. So yeah. April 16th now is a fixed hard deadline. You can't deliver anything beyond that. Which is, again, crazy. Which is something, sh- it's, he pointed it out that he's like, there, there has to be consumer protection laws or something. I don't know if he knew about it then or he figured it out later, but he brings it up in his article as well. Like, there has, like, he, he wasn't aware, like, from, from the announcement of the OST to him starting to work for the delivery date that's why he asked is it flexible or not because if it wasn't flexible obviously he wouldn't he would have asked for an extension or something and they wouldn't have had then then they would have had to officially delay it which they ended up saying in march uh in march 11th mm. they made a blog post that the oc won't be available on launch and that if you want to cancel your pre-order you can that was on their that's Bethesda that's website. that's part of the um yeah. that's part of the reasons that marty went to to reddit and blamed everything on on uh, Gordon. So uh, Gordon like did 18 to 20 or like 16 to 18 hours sort of like days and he delivered the tracks um, to, to Bethesda, but they asked him mm-hmm. like five hours before, you know, like the deadline was over. They asked him for different songs. Which, That's again, crazy. It's unrealistic. It's un- like that just yeah. shows. Yeah, it's not only mind blowing. It just shows that there was maybe a lack of understanding of how producing or making music works because like if but giving someone five I, hours I, I, of a time frame for anything doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah i don't i don't think it uh, i don't know a lack of understanding of how this whole thing works if they're if this was like the first game they worked on sure true true but you, you like I, it could be that they had the fattiest reasons and they wanted to kind of like throw them under the bus and they want to come up with reasons could- why Valid he, reasons. you know, yeah, yeah he, he underperformed and didn't deliver on time and whatnot. Like, you know, they could just say that he didn't give us the stuff that we asked for without going yeah. into the details that one of the stuff or some of the stuff that they asked for was asked five hours before the deadline. Yeah. And like, for example, this email about uh, the April 16 deadline, he actually has a copy of the email. He doesn't show it straight up, but he shows that mm-hmm. he has the copy of the email, uh, Mick Gordon about mm. them saying that oh yeah it's no longer flexible it's it's a hard date so go uh, mick gordon has proof or has shown some proof about like their mismanagement of the whole project or marty's mismanagement like this and the fact that he he claimed about the five hours there's no real proof but like still i'm i'm more inclined to believe it from how let's 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 get in, let's get into the proof uh like once we discuss the, you know everything that yeah. has happened Go for um, it. Uh, so yeah, so at this point, Marty, or sorry, Mick was like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on doing the game. I can't do anything for the OST if you guys keep changing directions. And that's when Bethesda told him that they will instead release a version of the soundtrack that was already being worked on by their lead audio designer, Chad, something or the other. Yeah. Right. He listened to that OST for the first time after it was released. So he, like, he didn't hear a single track, you know, other than what he obviously produced for them prior to the release. The and he, yeah. yeah, and he claimed that 47 of these tracks, you know, the other tracks that Chad worked on, they were riddled with technical faults and, dis- and you know, they, they, they had disregard for fundamentals. So, like, they were just terrible tracks. They had a lot of issues. Yeah. 
And then I'm assuming at that point, everybody was just kind of like mad at Bethesda because of the delays and probably right. some people picked up on, you know, the, the quality just not being up to par or the lack of Mick Gordon sort of like uh, uh, tracks on the, on the soundtrack. So uh, Marty then had a discussion with Gordon and Gordon claims that they both came to an agreement that they will have a joint statement to the public to discuss what happened with the whole thing with, yeah. the, with the OST. But as we've mentioned, Marty just Went posted an open letter on yeah. Reddit blaming everything on Gordon, damaging his reputation, his career. Like, I don't want to say his career is over. I don't know if it is. But like, at the very least, it had a negative impact on his, his image and his reputation. Yeah. His image, yeah, exactly. exactly. So, uh, so we have a, a couple of quotes here from Gordon. Um, he says that his statement was full of lies, disinformation, and innuendo. And when challenged, his company offered me a six-figure sum to shut up about it. <laughs> when, I tried, uh, when I tried time and time again, uh, amid a torrent of abuse, harassment, and threats to resolve the matter more amic amicably, amicably mm -hmm. he constantly refused, worried how addressing the Reddit post would damage his own reput reputation instead. All right. And that's that. And that's and then and then that's when Gordon, you know, went to Medium and just posted everything. Like, Two years oh, later, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Man, it, uh, but like, yeah. I don't know where you want to begin with this, but like, obviously, uh, you already mentioned it before. Mick wasn't doing nothing in these two years. Like, he was fighting. He was trying to, I guess, behind the scenes, try to sort this out. In an, yeah. Like you said. Yeah, because he uh, said in the in the medium post, like he mentioned, you know, that he spoke to lawyer to lawyers and like, you know, so they probably try to do things through the legal yeah. system. Yeah, I don't know when it started, but like there's this, a time on, on the email from 23rd of April 2020. Uh, th he got an email from Marty and then that's when he's like, I immediately had my legal representative contact its software. So I think that's when the legal part took over. So since then... Mm. Uh, until now, I think, like you said, nothing came out of it. So he decided to put out this post detailing in details because I'm sure his lawyers would have had to ask him, do you have email receipts? Do you have proof? Which he, he does. He clearly does, he of, does of the yeah. whole situation. So that's why he was able to put this blog post, I guess, properly, unlike Helena Taylor. Like just, just to Oh, yeah. Mention. If you want to make comparisons <laughs> to Helena, Helena made a lot of claims. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no proof whatsoever. Um, everybody, including us, kind of like took her side instantly because yeah, we'd like to believe, you know, you know, the David versus Goliath sort of like type of stories and, and, and archetypes. But it really did seem that she was lying or she's crazy yeah. or there's like more to the story that we don't know. Um, and Platinum Games really wasn't in the wrong in that particular instance. In yeah. this case, now I didn't go through his blog article, through his post. You did through some of it yeah. um you're saying that there 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 was some sort of proof about some of these allegations at least yeah there was uh in in terms of some emails like for example that email about the april 16th thing he had like it's all blacked out but he has the email mm. photo and then he states what's there like obviously like I, he doesn't want to reveal it maybe obviously, for legal yeah. reasons or something i don't know what it is but he does show proof and concerning chad's technical uh, things that you you mentioned before uh, again i don't i'm not a music producer i don't know the ins and outs of it but he shows like the the wave or like you know when you put it in a program and you see the the, the wave, wave form, format yeah. then he like points out like where the technical issues are here and there uh, like so he's well, done the okay. research himself like in uh, that regards well, I wouldn't say research. I would say just kind of like it's from his own expertise. Like yeah, yeah from his own expertise, yeah, yeah. he's like, oh, this is a technical error, and like the, he points it out, and then he talks about it. Well, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't want to kind of have a similar thing with Helena, like how everybody just kind of like stuck to one side and everything. Yeah. Uh, so again, I, my hot take on this matter is that yes he probably has more things to show but we still don't know both sides of the story completely we still haven't right. seen bethesda's cards yet there could be more emails that make didn't yeah. show or that that's what reveal. i want to get to yeah but yeah, like, yeah, like exactly but from what he yeah. did reveal like everything he said he backed it up with an email like the whole being concerned about the 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 ost he has yeah. an email to show it, like that as an example, you know? Like and does the email that, actually you know, show him saying, by the way, guys, so-and-so, yeah. that doesn't yeah. make so, sense, the timing and whatnot, all that sort of stuff? 
Okay. So he has receipts. Does, does he show their responses? <laughs> no. Like, Aha. the only response he showed was, like, Marty Stratton's, like, Marty gets involved bringing threats and contradictions. He has a timestamp. He has Marty's email to Mick Gordon, to himself, and then it's blacked out. And well, then I mean, he just states really what show. was in it. Well, it doesn't, as but proof, again... that doesn't really help. If, but I think that if someone asks for it, he's like, this is it. Maybe it's a legal thing. I'm not sure why it's blacked out, but it it's, sh- pro- it's, it's probably a legal thing. If they were going through all this like legal uh, uh, procedure, I'm assuming that a lot of the stuff uh, will have to be redacted, will have to remain confidential and whatnot. Yeah. I'm sure he went through all of the stuff that he wanted to post on his, uh, on his Medium account with his lawyers and they told him he can't show this, yeah. he can't show this, whatever. Exactly. And I'm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm not taking sides, not yet. I'm more inclined to believe him, but I'm not officially taking any side. All I'm saying is that we definitely need to see their sort of like, you know, paperwork, their emails, their correspondence, their proof of what happened. Yeah. They did come out with a statement, but the, it means shit. Uh, it you, really you, does. Oh, my yeah. God. It's so bad. I, I, I yeah. can't believe that this it? was. Okay. Well, <laughs> do, do, shall I go from the Twitter post or from from what you wrote? I don't mind. Uh, hang on. Whatever. So, like so, this. so Bethesda since then has issued an official statement claiming that Gordon's counts of events were one-sided and unjust. They they even said that they were they that they were ready with full and complete document evidence to disclose in an appropriate venue as needed. Whatever the hell that means. So they apparently have their documentation, as you said, and they just want to talk about it somewhere else. I don't know what that means. But they mentioned how Gordon's post has uh, incited harassment and threats of violence and asked fans to refrain from reaching conclusions just based on a single account. Where Now, I have to I have to agree. Not that uh, Marty didn't do the same thing. Marty definitely did. The open letter blaming blaming Mick, uh, I didn't even look look into it, but I'm 100%, 1000% sure that a lot of people went to mix uh twitter account or medium or whatever like his social media basically and harassed them because we've seen this happen time and time again yeah like, we've it seen it. but happens. like but yeah. like the cool thing about what uh, gordon did uh mick gordon from the beginning from the beginning he's like i don't want this is not meant to uh, hate anyone you should everyone who worked on the game deserve the credit this is not about them this is about me and marty Basically, this is what how he entered it. Like he he wasn't there to to start. Uh, oh no, like I'm a, sure. A, I'm 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 100 sure his intention was not to throw yeah. like you know like any hit. Oh, well, not any hit, but like to turn the public over against Bethesda, right? Right, or against you know any every single person that worked on the game and all that sort of stuff. But having said that, if yeah. I was in his shoes. Even if I did the same thing and I wrote that same sort of like statement in the beginning, like, oh, please don't go start a flame war or whatever, I would like I would expect people to do that to happen. But he he did his part. It's not like he didn't start it. He's not. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. But Bethesda is kind of like. There's a there's a a salt of truth in that statement that, yes, he did somehow incite that because anybody would know that any person who would have this sort of blog or like would have these kind of accounts or like would would state or allege what he alleged um you know his fans would just kind of like you know go and and start harass the other the other side right there's i'm not saying that he shouldn't have done that i'm just saying that this is a a no-win situation right but he had i guess his agenda again going from the blog post uh he wants the truth he wa- he didn't want money out of this. He wanted to the truth, and I'll I'll just say what he wrote. Um, yes. And it, after like the whole legal and everything, it's near the end. There's a, a headline just just says "Go to hell." After he was offered the six figure th- sum, you remember? Yeah. yeah. So six, he was six offered six figure sum and to shut up about it. Yeah, exactly. He was offered that after the whole legal thing. This was the end result. So he was offered. He was going to be offered a six figure sum. They wanted to keep the blog post up. And not take it down, uh, yeah. even though Marty was in the wrong in this case. Of course. Uh, and Mick was like, go to hell. And he states, as far as I, I was concerned, signing the gag order was out of the question. Giving up my right to tell the truth just to get some money was totally unacceptable. 
and it and it meant having Marty walk all over all, all over me. Uh, mm. So and to him in the next paragraph, he's like, the truth is more important. So I I don't want to keep keep quoting, but that's pretty much what he wanted out of this. He just wants to know like what actually happened, because so far for the last couple of years, everyone the only thing that anyone knows is what uh, Marty has posted against him, against his reputation, and his work, and he just wanted to let everyone know. This was the case, which is fair. Now, now it's out of the open. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now, I like. We we need to get like the full story from both, from both sides. Again, we won't get it. <laughs> we probably won't get it. But like, I really wonder yeah. what Bethesda has, like, to offer or to show either Marty or his well, lawyers or uh, you know. Again, I'm not, I'm not taking any sides. And like I said yeah. before, I'll say this again. I'm more inclined to lean on. On Marty's, on on sorry, on Mix Mick Gordon's side, yeah. But when the Helena Taylor thing happened at first, <laughs> we yeah, asked proof. the same question: like, That's what right. kind of proof can Platinum Games have, right? And then I don't remember now, but we talked about it then. It was like people <laughs> collaborated, right? Like they yeah. they issued out a statement, and then it was uh, with uh, uh, Schreier, Jason Schreier, Jason Schreier, yeah, 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 other yeah. reporters. So so yeah. industry, yeah, exactly, industry professionals, trusted industry like journalists collaborated that they saw the evidence and it's true hmm. this could be the same situation all over again that's why i'm kind of like tiptoeing around the whole thing and i'm saying that yo you know what let's see the other side you know what of course you know, documents they have you know the emails stuff that maybe wasn't shown because it is true this is a one-sided conversation now. now it was a one-sided conversation before with bethesda then two and a half years later it's now again kind of like flipped over to the other side it's now a one-sided conversation with mccordon yeah. Both sides I, have to come. I wouldn't and say just it's one sided. Everything. I would, yeah, I wouldn't say it's one sided because Marty said something and now makes sense something. So that's well, both that's sides. what I said. It was one sided <laughs> back then. Two now and a half years later, yeah. like after the dust has settled. Yeah. The the the, Actually, the true. it's 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 being brought up again, but from a one sided manner. Mick is kind of like saying everything that he's got to say, mm -hmm. and now it's on Bethesda to do something about it, because. Up until they do something about it, it's in their best interest to make sure that all the fans, all the gamers, you know, everybody on social media and the you know, gaming Twitterverse knows their side of the story as well because they're going to yeah. automatically just take Gordon's side. And I've seen this on their accounts. I forgot what it, like what was posted. A few of the, like a few a few posts from their Twitter account mm. about something completely different, like some game, some event, some whatever. And people yeah. in, you know, will like will apply to those tweets. Normally. And like they would attack them. You guys are thieves. You guys, you know, ripped off uh, Mick. You Blood guys, the his yeah. reputation, so on and so forth. That's just going to be the discussion. Maybe they want until to wait it out for a few weeks, and you know, until like people just kind of like forget about it, mm. and they don't have to deal with anything, right? Or maybe they want to do something. I don't know. The the undisclosed what was it the the appropriate venue as needed. I think what they mean by that is that not do it publicly like Mick did. Yeah. Maybe they want to like go and like talk, you know, with lawyers again and just kind of. To be fair, again. to be fair, it, Mick didn't start it. <laughs> like if it was oh, Mick, yeah. if it was Mick's account only, sure. Like this, this uh, post that they did, which I'm looking at, is justified. But the fact that Marty. Yeah, like, yeah. again, even, I'm not Marty saying Stratton Mick behind the scenes. Oh, I'm not saying uh, Mick is in the wrong. I'm not like I said, Marty started it. Like he's, yeah, it is all started with him, but. What took place before that, like, you know, the, the details oh, like of in between. him getting okay. unpaid, you know, like what the work was like, all that sort of stuff, that has to be sorted out as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would encourage you and anyone else to read the Medium post, take your time and see how he's put everything together. It's, it's well laid out and it's very, like, I wouldn't say emotionless, but like it's very level-headed writing in terms mm. of what he's been through. Because he's been through hell, literally he's been through hell for like before the game and after the game from from what it sounds like um like and not being able to talk about it for so long and like trying to fight it behind the scenes it's unfortunate how it what it led to but i do hope something comes out of it but yeah like just just to clarify another thing we kept saying chad and hating on chad because we don't know his name his full name is chad moss holder so Chad, he's he's the lead audio designer. It's software. I'm sure, yeah. like he, he's he's good and professional. But like, 
it's it's really Marty. Like the the problem with what happened is, or the fallout that happened here is not because the um, the company was bad or anything was bad. Unfortunately, it comes down to a bad management or poor management by, on Marty Stratton's account. Again, we don't know the full story, but from we what it sounds like, yeah. but from what it sounds like, it's it's a case of poor management on on Definitely. Marty's account. That's what Definitely. it sounds like from from the timing, uh, from the time, uh, the deadlines, the time frame, the impossible time frames, um, the, changing directions, the, not paying them, um, asking yeah. for last minute sort of like you know different songs, all that sort exactly. of stuff. It's all crazy. It's all insane. Insane um, and really, really yeah. extreme case of mismanagement, which causes all this, like unfortunately. So yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. The um, like it, it sucks. Like when you hear of stuff like that happening, because it could happen to you, right? Like, yeah, it people, could happen to people anybody who's got a boss, yeah. who's got a manager that is a dick or maybe doesn't pay them on time or abuses them or harasses it. them. It's crazy. And I've heard, like, I haven't played all of Doom Eternal. I've played for a few hours. But oh, you have? Play, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But even, even before playing Doom, I've heard a lot of the soundtrack before. And BFG Division is. An amazing, amazing track. I hope it's no, it is his. It's 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 Mick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it is uh, from 2016, right? You're talking about 2016's Doom or or the Doom Eternal BFG? Uh, oh, BFG is not Eternal, is it? It's, a tw- I'm not it's really 2016 sure, actually. Yeah, 2016. My bad. That's when Mick. Yeah, it's fine. No, that's when Mick. Uh, like I guess made a name for himself because the 2016 Doom was fantastic. The, the soundtrack. Beautiful soundtrack. So yeah. what I would urge everyone to do is in any sort of way support Mick. Not because he's necessarily the victim, because we still don't know if he's the victim, but his work is amazing. Yeah. So go listen to him. On Spotify. Yeah. He, well, yeah, but the, but the Spotify tracks will not, like the, the money will not go to him. It will go directly oh, to Oh, it won't? Person. Even though it yeah, says yeah. Mick Gordon? I know. Well, I mean, that's uh, just kind of like who, the information about no. the track. Yeah. Unless no, it's well, under if, McGordon's account, like if it says, I think it's under, I think it's under his account because it's verified artist McGordon. So I, there if you, you want go. To support so go him, listen on Spotify. on Spotify. I know he's got a website. I checked it out a couple of years ago. Share like when it. I first, Please, yeah. when, when I first um, heard BFG. Go check it out. See if he has any other social media accounts or if his music is el- you know up somewhere else. Support him because he's great. Not because yeah. he's necessarily the victim here. Because again, we don't have the full story. Obviously, do not have us anybody, regardless of mm. whether it's Mick or Marty's side, right? And uh, and yeah, uh, this is all all that we know right now. Same as with Helena's situation, we had an update <laughs> we have to, video we that have had to like draw that was a complete yeah. The, yeah, yeah, but because it's 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 weird how it all happened like at around the same time. Uh, hopefully, we don't have to do another update video where. It's the complete opposite 180 degree sort of account of what has happened, yeah. but maybe confirming the original sort of statements or allegations by Mick. Yeah. Uh, I, like I said, we don't know the full story, but I'm, I'm not taking any sides personally, but I'm leaning on like Mick's side, but no official Me too. sort I, of like, yeah, yeah. Even though, even though in my heart, I think Mick is in the right, but like, yes, I, I need to be cautious thanks to Helena Taylor's Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we have to be, yeah. you know what, let's just call it for what it is. It was a great learning experience, right? Yeah. <laughs> for, for what has happened. It's, uh, I, I, you know what, I didn't get a chance to say this during the Helena Taylor portion, like, or like, you know, story, but Helena Taylor has proven to be the Amber Heard of the voice actors sort of community. Wow. Good right? way of putting like it. This, yeah. 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 Um, because it was the same thing, right? People fell for her lies, fell for her, you know, claims and everything. And then it was suddenly revealed that, no, it's the other way around. Mm. You know, Amber is the crazy one and Johnny Depp is not. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully this won't be the same thing. Uh, anyways, let's just end it here. We don't have anything else to talk about or regarding this. We just think that it sucks and we hope whoever's in the right gets what they're owed. Yeah, and we tried to... I guess summarize the the, the long long posts. Yeah, I don't know how long this will be, but the episode is going to be about forty minutes long, or like maybe thirty five. St- still shorter than I'm, reading I'm, it, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, still shorter. Yeah, I hope we had a good account of everything, and you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have like you know, we gave a good update about the situation, and uh, yeah, so let's just end it here. 
Let's do it. Thanks for watching the episode. Do drop us a like or comment and subscribe for more content or go to badgood.gg to find our audio podcast. We are on Twitter and Instagram at badgoodpod. So give us a follow there and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.